In her deeply personal memoir, Dangerous Love, Karen Daniels tells a story of being a na young, naive girl from a sheltered life who falls in love uh, with and marries the man of her dreams and a love that turns to obsession and violence. She also gives a vivid account by letting the reader ride along on a roller coaster abyss of armed heists, crime and violent abuse. Well, Karen Daniels is joining me now via Zoom to shed more light. Karen, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us and a warm welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now tell us more about this book, Karen, and why you felt the deep need to share your personal story through it. Yes, well, um, it's taken me a long time to um, own my own story and to actually write this book and to, and to share it with the world. But I created a second chance for myself. Mm -hmm. And I wanted my children to know the journey that I had to travel and that sometimes in life, um, you know, you've got to lean in really hard and make the changes that you want to see in your life. I also um, wrote the book uh, because I hope that it would give others hope, um, give them a voice and give them the strength that they may need to change their circumstances. Okay. Now, just paint us a picture for us as to how your life with your Prince Charming turned from love um, into one of obsession and violence. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it, it started like many relationships do when you're young and in your 20s. Um, boy meets girl, you fall in love. And generally, you know, when you're so young and naive, it's all about roses and romance. And you don't think about, uh, you know, anything else. And... Um, yeah, we fell in love and within weeks of dating, uh, he asked me to marry him and we were married. We moved in pretty soon after that and within a year we were married and he, he kept me very close to him. Um, we were never separated. We were never apart. He told me constantly how he loved me and um, how he would never, he couldn't see his life without me. And I think you know, we were almost like joined at the hip. Mm, mm. I suppose the signs were there from, from the beginning. He was a very jealous man. Um, and I suppose when you're young, it's very flattering that somebody uh, loves you that much, that wants to be with you all the time, that wants to know your every single move, um, who you speak to, where you go. It can be very flattering. Um, but I think there's a fine line between a all-encompassing or consuming love and a narcissistic obsession. I think later on, his obsessive jealousy caused him to fly into um, jealous rages over the slightest thing. Um, if he couldn't get hold of me when I was at work or if I came on home a little bit late, if I spoke to a little bit too long to a male friend. Um, so anything would, would spark these outbursts. Um, he manipulated me and slowly isolated me from my family and from my friends. And I was too young, I think, and naive to, to know that love, real love, is not about that. It, it's not about holding that person so close to you and not giving them space to be themselves. It's really about trust and giving that person the freedom to grow and to shine. And you should bring your own value to the to the relationship you shouldn't rely on somebody else yeah. um, and make them responsible for your entire being and happiness well this is such a profound account karen now speak to us about that shocking wake-up call you had that propelled you to take charge of your life yeah it was the sudden and very brutal death of my um high school sweetheart my my first love i left home um, when, when, well, when I was 20 and got married very suddenly and, uh, him and I never had an opportunity to sort of get closure. And, um, I was planning to go home. My, my life was in a mess and, um, I was planning to go home and I was planning to meet up with him and to just say the things that we didn't have an opportunity to say. And, um, but I, I never got that chance to actually do that. Uh, he was brutally murdered at um, the Strandfontein Pavilion, which is a beach pav a pavilion near Mitchell's Plain, a colored um, area in, in Cape Town. And um, 
he he was in a coma from his horrific injuries and uh, he didn't make it and it really shook me his death absolutely shook my world and it made me realize that life is very fragile mm-hmm. and um you have a responsibility to take ownership of your life and to lead a meaningful and fulfilling and happy life and it was after his death that i started to think about and consider the actual possibility of leaving uh, this this relationship mm. and in one of the chapters in the book you write that keeping secrets is a risky business but when you keep information to yourself that relates to your safety it is downright reckless tell us what you mean by this Yes, I'm surprised you picked up that uh, that uh, paragraph. Mm, mm. Yeah, what I, I I meant by that is that generally people in these situations we we keep secrets. Um we make up stories about you know why why we have bruises or why we didn't pitch up to a to a party. So we start keeping secrets and um and and eventually those secrets became my prison. it was it, it it was the walls of my prison and kept me captive there um and i think silence is very dangerous in these types of relationships because silence it protects the abuser yeah and yeah. gives them power over you uh-huh and um, i think breaking the silence exposes the abuser and lets them carry that burden of shame and it also forces you to take stock of your situation and to start to move towards changing your circumstances for the better now let's talk about your healing process and your healing journey and how your life is like where you are today yeah like i said it took me 20 years um to own that part of my of my story um but when i walked away from that life i i never looked back i threw myself into my work into my studies um my job and i was afraid that I didn't want people to know about that part of my life because I was afraid that they would see me for that and not for me and the potential that I had. But over the years I have continued to work on myself, mm-hmm. on my own personal growth, and I've become a lot braver mm-hmm. and I've embraced vulnerability and that has been very liberating. Today I can say that I found my my peace and my passion. um and i try and live a more authentic life um i married i married again some years later and um had two beautiful uh kids twins they 11 years old today and um i i work for a multinational i live in amsterdam and um my job actually is very much aligned with my my passion of helping people and um helping them to reach their full potential and to be the best that they can be i'm i'm actually working um in human rights and implementing human rights based practice okay. for the multinational that i i work for you know karen it is so refreshing to speak to you know a, a new version of yourself and a much braver self i mean you you also give an account in this book of being a woman of color in the anarchy of early post apartheid south africa uh, share more on that aspect and your story i know that is one that is filled with human resilience courage determination and uh, just take us through what you want your readers of this book to take away after reading the story Yeah I I think when I was young um the world was very different in in South Africa we never had a lot of opportunity um and and I think especially as a colored girl you know there's there's a lot um to be said about growing up being a white South African and growing up being, being a black South African but as colored people we just somewhere there in the middle and um things were were just as challenging for us especially because you never really belonged um in in either of those camps um yeah so life was different then there wasn't a lot of opportunity and you had to make your own opportunity and you had to you had to speak up for yourself i think the biggest takeaway that i'd like readers to have is that you certainly are what you believe yourself to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that we as women and and humans are are hugely resilient and we are way stronger than we think and if you believe you can do something you most certainly can do it oh yes
Uh, Karen, great chatting to you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, this refreshing conversation. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on the show. That was life coach and author Karen Daniels, and we were in conversation with her about a deeply moving book she entitled Dangerous Love, a memoir of love, obsession, and violence.